This must be the place Professor Oubier's house. Looks pretty creepy. I'd been away from Paris and hadn't seen Nico for nearly six months. I wanted to celebrate our reunion, but she had other plans. An appointment with an archaeologist. Something to do with a Mayan stone she came across while researching the story. The guy who answered the door didn't look much like an archaeologist to me. I had a bad feeling about this. I glanced over the books, vaguely hoping to find a copy of How to Deal with Poisonous Spiders While Tied to a Chair. No such luck. But I noticed one corner of the bookcase was supported by a loose block of wood. Maybe I'd been a little heavy-handed, but it was a question of survival. Of course, I was still tied to a chair in a burning house with no means of escape. With one mighty bound, our hero was free. Now, I had to deal with that fire. Highly artistic, but of very little practical use. Inside, I found a bottle of tequila. Normally, I didn't drink strong spirits, but today was far from normal. <laughs> Disgusting! Not only did the tequila burn like hell, I just managed to stop myself from swallowing the worm. There was something short, fleshy, and gross on the carpet. It was the worm from the bottle of tequila. In the drawer was a small decorated pot. Nice couple.
I wasn't going to get through those sturdy bars. It was a stylish little canvas number containing a lipstick, a handwritten note, and a pair of nylon panties with a large love heart emblazoned across the front. It occurred to me that Nico's tastes must have really changed while I was away. Well, they could be useful. That dart was sharper than a mosquito's business end, but this didn't deter me from getting it anyway. I wasn't going to touch the box after that spider had been inside it. There was no pressure in the siphon. I guess it was out of gas. The cabinet was locked. The cabinet was locked. As I released the lock, something blew the doors open. I couldn't think of a use for a burst cylinder. The cabinet was already open. That cylinder was hot. I couldn't pick it up with my bare hands. I found in Nico's bag were just what I needed to wrap around the hot cylinder. There was no pressure in the siphon. I guess it was out of gas. The cylinder gave out a faint hiss as the valve opened. What? Now I had one primed up and ready to use extinguisher. The door blocked my only means of escape. Time to start looking for Nico. I wasn't going to burn myself on that red hot doorknob, and it wasn't the time for subtlety.
The door was locked. I didn't fancy my chances of kicking this door down. It was locked. The pot contained a key. I guess I had no business reading the note, but I figured it might give me a clue to what Nico was involved in. It was from Andre Labano, the history student Nico had known at college. The letter was sentimental mush, and revealed that the exotic lingerie, as he called it, was a gift from him. It gave his telephone number. Labano figured himself as a rival for Nico's affections, but I couldn't believe that that creep was in the running. I'd found a piece of newspaper folded in two. It referred to a forthcoming eclipse of the sun. Unfortunately, it wouldn't be visible from Europe. The best place to view the eclipse would be Mexico. Much as I disliked him, Labano might be my only hope of finding Nico. Hi, Andre. Who is this? It's George Stobart, Nico's boyfriend. Don't you mean ex-boyfriend? Look, I didn't call you just to pick a fight. I need to talk to you about Nico. Can't you accept she's just not interested in you? Listen, Andre, we need to talk. Nico's life depends on it. Okay. You remember the cafe at Montfaucon? Sure. Andre? You'd better show, you creep. I felt an irrational urge to wipe my ear. The door was locked. I unlocked the door. I wasn't looking forward to meeting Labano again, but he was my only link with Nico. There was no sign of Labano when I got to the cafe. I decided to order a coffee and wait for him. He ignored me. I'm sure it was deliberate. Hey, you. What? I'd like a cup of coffee if you don't mind. When I finish serving this gentleman, Un café. Thanks. Do you know a guy?
guy called Andre Lobino? Oui, I know him. What of it? Well, I'm supposed to meet him here. Did I miss him? No, I have not seen him today. Have you heard of Professor Ubier? Oui. He married that actress, the little Dachshund. They used to come here, the nutty professor and the movie star. If Ubier's wife was a movie star, how come I never heard of her? She was big in France. The world doesn't stop at Hollywood. Her stage name was Carol Climax. She died in suspicious circumstances. How did Ubier's wife die? I heard he shot her. And got away with it? He had a good lawyer and a watertight alibi. Why would an eminent public figure like Ubier risk everything for murder? He wouldn't be the first, would he? Besides, people like him always get off. Do you know that man over there? I should think so. He's a regular customer. Who is he? A man with a secret. He used to be a cop. Of course. I'd met the gendarme in this very cafe. He was kicked out of the force a few months ago. Since then, he's been drinking himself stupid. His liver must look like the last pickle in the jar. Look at this. A poison dart. Now ah, we, oui. Sure. It's the real thing. Knocked my girlfriend out cold in a matter of seconds. Romantic. Sounds like a real close relationship you have going. That's all. Thank you. Well, well, this is a surprise, Georgie. I wouldn't normally call you, but Nico's in trouble, Andre, deep trouble. You have to help me find her. What? What have you dragged her into this time? It was you that recommended Professor Ubier as an expert on Mayan art. Now his butler has kidnapped her, and he tried to kill me. Every time she gets involved with you, there is trouble. Walking out on her was the best thing you could do. My father was dying, damn it. I had no choice. Well, she soon recovered once she went back to her old friends. Drop it, Andre. Right now, Nico's in danger, and we have to work together. So, how can I help? Nico needed to speak to Ubier about a stone. Oh, you mean this stone? So that's what all the trouble's about. Precisely. Nicole told me to guard it with my life. Well, it's worth more than that, surely. Oh, very funny. What's funny is that your life really is on the line. What are you talking about? The stone is a Mayan artifact, dummy. And the guy who kidnapped Nico was from Central America. It was the stone they were after. Oh, my God. You mean I could be in danger, too? Why didn't Nico take the stone to Ubier? I don't know. Perhaps she suspected something like this would happen. If she's been hurt, Andre, I'll break every bone in your body. No, that's typical of you. Do you think I don't care what happens to Nico? It occurred to me that slugs don't have bones to break, but I kept that thought to myself. What do you suppose the carving on the stone means? I don't know. I haven't shown it to anyone. Why don't you just give it to me? I don't want your death on my conscience, Georges. Does Ubier employ a guy from Central America? Maybe. I don't know.
what can you tell me about this pot? Mm, South or Central American, I'd say. I have a friend who'd be able to tell you more. Where can I find this guy? He owns a gallery on the left bank, the Glees Gallery. See you later. Goodbye, Georgie. I've had enough of your games, Kalal. Tell me what you've done with my stone. I thought your business was simply smuggling cocaine, Karzak. Why are you so interested in that stone? Either you tell me what I want to know, or Pablo here will make you talk. Okay. Well, I figured someone at the university would be able to help. So I had a word with one of my girlfriends, and she told me her boyfriend was a lecturer. I... I sent a stone to the Department of Ethnology. You know, I figured it was South American, so... You're not buying this, are you? That's enough! I don't have time to listen to your mindless prattle. We'll leave you to think it over. Come the morning, you'll be ready to talk.